For it's a long way to Tipperary. Hello, and welcome to the Rockville Cemetery. It's Kansas. This is Sugar Creek, Kansas, in Miami County. Welcome to the gravesite of James Cameron. James Cameron is, let me see, my fourth great-grandfather, father to Peter Cameron. Next to him, over here, we have William Cameron, who is brother to my Peter Cameron. So let's have a beer with the Camerons. <laughs> Little chilly here today, here in Miami County, Kansas. Here's to you, William. William was kind of famous around here in Sugar Creek. He and the Binkleys had a company. I don't know exactly what they did. But they had a shop, and they were somewhat famous around here. This is the Rockville Cemetery, where William Cameron, brother to Peter Cameron, is buried. On the other side of William Cameron's... Oh, my God, I'm in the wrong spot. This is James A. Cameron. Let's start this over. For it's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long Hello, and welcome to the Rockville Cemetery. We're here in Sugar Creek, Kansas, in Miami County, at the gravesite of James Cameron, father to Peter Cameron. Peter Cameron was my third great-grandfather, making James Cameron my fourth great-grandfather. Came from Virginia. Uh, Peter and William, their brothers, were born in Kentucky, uh, near Floyd's Fork, I believe. So, let's have a beer with James Cameron. <laughs> Rockville Cemetery. Originally, this was called the William Cameron Cemetery. Just out of shot you can't see is the William Cameron headstone. On the back side of the William Cameron headstone is the name Mary Cameron, his wife. Originally Mary Hightower, one of the Hightowers. The Hightower Cameron Conundrum. More on that later. <laughs> so what I have here in Rockville James Cameron, my fourth great-grandfather, but of note, to my right, your left, is James Albert Cameron. James Albert Cameron was born in 1850, the same year as my second great-grandfather, James Newton Cameron. James Albert Cameron was my second great-grandfather's cousin. My second great-grandfather, James Newton Cameron named his first son James Albert Cameron. So there's something going on there with that old Albert. More on that later. There's a lot coming up later, I guarantee. <laughs> Stopped into the Miami County Historical Society where I met... Uh, is it Vern? And she told me that just south of her, where she lives, is what was known as the Peter Cameron Cemetery. I was just up there looking for it, but there's no sight of any old gravestones. I had heard that the owner there many years ago moved the stones. It's kind of a problem. They said that there was, it was impossible to tell what they said anyway. But it was originally known as the Peter Cameron Cemetery. And they said it was on Peter Cameron's land. Peter Cameron, of course, was the son of James Cameron, died in 1864 here, buried in the Cameron Cemetery, now known as Rockville. Let me see if there's any loose ends I should clear up for you before I leave here, because it's freezing. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so William Cameron over there, you can't see, is the brother of Peter Cameron, my third great grandfather. They moved here to Sugar Creek in the 1870s, I understand. Peter Cameron was a farmer. My second great grandfather, his son James Newton Cameron, actually started farming right next to the original Peter Cameron farm, just a couple of blocks from here. Didn't set right with him, evidently, because he ends up being a laborer in Parsons, Kansas, in the 1875 census, I find. We know James Newton Cameron died at the age of 25 in 1875 of appendicitis. So, one final sip. <laughs> For my fourth great grandfather, James Cameron. We didn't think we'd find his headstone here. And you can see it's rather in disrepair. But it's great to find the old boys. Hey, James. <laughs> ah, beautiful day and a wonderful drive here through wonderful Miami County, Kansas. Signing off from the former William Cameron Cemetery, now the Rockville Cemetery. Signing off for James Cameron, my fourth great grandfather. For it's a long way. Well, hello there, and welcome to the Peter Cameron Cemetery. Having a beer with my Scotch relatives. Supposedly right underneath me. Of course, you'd never know that. Because as you may see, there's nothing here but old rocks. Some of these rocks are old tombstones. The story goes that this land had been purchased by someone where the existing Peter Cameron Cemetery was. They removed all the stones to this tree to farm the land. Well, I'm going to look into seeing what we can do about that. You can guarantee. So anyway, we're here at the Peter Cameron Cemetery. This also was Peter Cameron's land. He and his wife, Nancy Smith, moved here in 1865. They bought the property in July of 1865, sold it in 1884. I don't know what happened to him after 1884, but that's the first I've got of that date. <laughs> Peter Cameron, wife Nancy. Their children were James Newton Cameron. That's my second great-grandfather. George Cameron, Charles W. Cameron, Peter Franklin Cameron, Farozina N. Cameron, and Dora Cameron. Quite a family. Those Scots. They breed like Catholics. So basically, I'm here on what used to be the Peter Cameron land. Uh, plot 27, in case you're looking for it, here in the southwest corner. He lived here and farmed here in what was evidently a very difficult uh, period in the 1870s. A lot of the families were attracted to this area because it seemed like such a great place to grow things. You'd plant stuff here and it would just grow up. I found this out from a local historian. Unfortunately, what that was due to was exceptional rains that didn't happen all the time, but in those periods it had. So a lot of families moved into this area to start farming. Then it went back to its regular weather. They thought it was a drought. In fact, I'd be darn sure that my second great-grandfather, James Newton Cameron, who was farming on this land also in 1870, that I'll bet it was the drought that forced him to move to Parsons to become a laborer with his wife, Rachel Emily Budd. She also was here on this property.
We're just about a mile and a half from the Rockville Cemetery, which was the William Cameron land, and originally the William Cameron Cemetery. Seems to be a regular thing with these Scots. I've got to figure out what you do if you find a place that used to be a cemetery where your relatives are buried, what you might do about that. Like, I'd like to place a stone here for Peter. And here's my theory. Since I couldn't find James Newton Cameron buried in Parsons, I truly believe James Newton Cameron came to be buried on his home turf. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> So once again, we're going to have to wrap this up fairly quickly as this is private property. I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> the people who live right next door are the ones who told me about the Peter Cameron Cemetery. Unfortunately, she said I'm not supposed to give out her name. And so I'm not going to tell you who she is. <laughs> so signing off before the police come from the former Peter Cameron Cemetery, now a wasteland of broken rocks and tombstones. Hopefully we can resurrect it, if that isn't incorrect usage of that word. <laughs> so signing off from the former Peter Cameron Cemetery here in Sugar Creek Township, Miami County, Kansas. I woke up with a teardrop in my eye. I wondered what it was that made me cry. Was it a dream I had of you? A dream I feel that might come true I dream